Uh, 6.4's lesson is called Solving Trigonometric Equations Using Identities, and that's on pages 316 to 320 in your textbook. Our curriculum outcomes, uh, 30.5, demonstrate understanding of trigonometric identities. And our lesson objectives, there's only two of them. Number one, to recall how to solve trigonometric equations by using the unit circle. And number two, to use identities to simplify a trigonometric equation. Recall that the unit circle has the exact values for sine, cosine, and tangent for some of our major angles. That would be like 30, 60, 45, 90 degrees. And so we're going to start with an example. It says solve the following equation algebraically over the domain. 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 2 pi. And the equation is 2 cos x plus 1 minus sine squared x equals 3. Now right off the bat, that looks like it's fairly complicated because we have a cos x and a sine x in the same equation. But hopefully you can recognize that 1 minus sine x can probably be um, removed and replaced with something else. So if you remember the identity sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1, then if I were to move the sine squared x over to the left and uh, right hand side, I would get cos squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x. So I can make that substitution. So I end up getting 2 cos x, and instead of 1 minus sine squared x, I get cos x squared, or cos squared x, and that equals 3. Now that you see this equation, hopefully you recognize this as a quadratic equation. So maybe you want to just rewrite it when I can get this pen to work. There we go. Cos squared x plus 2 cos x minus 3 equals 0. And we factor this thing by finding two numbers that multiply together to give you negative 3, but add together to give you positive 2. And that would be cos x plus 3 and cos x minus 1. Now, solving this equation, we get cos x equal to negative 3, and we get cos x equal to positive 1. Right off the bat, you should know that cos x never equals a number that is greater than 1 or less than negative 1. That's why the cosine graph always started at a height of positive 1 and only went down as low as a height of negative 1. So this answer is unreasonable. We don't need to try and solve for it. But cos x equals 1 appears on our unit circle. And remember on our unit circle, that the answer uh, for cos x is always your first coordinate. And so we're looking at this number right here. There's a one right there. So that's at zero degrees. So cos x equals one. That would be where x equals zero degrees. And then the next place it would be, it wouldn't be two pi, at pi, sorry, because that would be a negative one. And next place it would be, would be at two pi. But the restrictions on this variable say that we can't uh, equal to pi. So we only have one answer, and that is x equals 0. So our second example says, algebraically solve cos 2x equals cos x. Give general solutions expressed in radians. So I guess one way you could, you could check your answers after you find them is you could graph this thing if you use a program like GeoGebra. You could just graph each of these um, cosine graphs and find out where they cross, and where they cross is going to be your algebraic solutions. But we need to find it um, using actual math. So right off the bat, cos 2x is, gets a little confusing. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a substitution using a double angle identity. Now, since this other side of the equation already has cos x, then we need to write cos 2x in terms of only one trig function. And so that substitution would be 2 cos squared x. So you have to remember that for cosine 2x, if you don't have these written down, you should have three different identities for cosine 2x. So we've got 2 cos squared x minus 1 is the same as cosine 2x, and that equals cos x. And now we're back to an equation that we can solve. We have to move everything over to the one side. Once you see that quadratic, see that squared term, you want to move everything to one side and then factor. Now this would be it a chance for you to use maybe decomposition or you can kind of use like a guess and check method. I know that if I multiply the two first terms together then I'm, I need to get 2 cos squared x. So one of these things is 2 cos x and the other thing is just regular cos x. And then this second term is going to be 1 in this one and the second term here is going to be negative 1. And we can just double check 2 cos x times cos x is 2 cos squared x. 2 cos x minus 1 is negative 2 cos x, 
and a positive one cos x when I multiply these two numbers together. That gives me the negative cos x and one times negative one is negative one. So we get, when we solve both of these factors, we get this first one being cos x equals negative half by moving the one over to the other side and then dividing by two. And then we get cos x equaling one. So the other key thing here is that it says we need to give general solutions. So you have to remember how to give general solutions. So let's take a look at our unit circle. It'll help us out. Now we're looking for where cos x is equal to negative half. So we also have to bring in the old cast rule. So we know where cosine equals positive half, and that is right here. And that was at an angle of uh, 60 degrees, but they said we need to use radians. So we're talking about pi over three, but it's a negative ratio. So we need to put it in quadrants two and three. So if this is pi over three, the next one is two pi over three. And then in quadrant uh, right on this uh, at 180 degrees is three pi over three and then four pi over three. And then for cosine x equals positive one, we've already determined that last example and that's at zero degrees. So we actually have three answers. So we need to write this as a general solution. So remember that for a uh, cosine graph that it repeats itself every two pi. So we actually have three answers. We have zero plus two pi n. We have two pi, two pi over three plus two pi n. And we have four pi over three plus two pi n. And this is where I'll be lazy and just write where n e i. So where n is all the is an integer. So I'll just use the squiggly brackets to, to do that. So our last example says that we're going to algebraically solve three cos x plus two equals five secant x and give general solutions expressed in radians again. Well, right off the bat, hopefully you recognize that secant x is the reciprocal of cosine. So we can write this as five over cosine x. Now that you see this cosine in the denominator here on the right hand side, that makes our equation kind of difficult to solve. So what we will do is we'll multiply everything by cosine x. So as long as we multiply each term by cosine x, then we're okay. So this ends up being three cosine squared x. This ends up being two times cosine x. And on the right hand side, we just get a plain old five because our cosines cancel out. So again, we see a quadratic, which means we need to move it all to one side and we need to factor. Now, with this three in front, now is your best bet to probably use decomposition. Decomposition, we multiply these two numbers together, we get negative 15. So we're gonna try and split up this middle term into two terms in which they add up to negative 15. So we get three cos squared x. So two numbers that multiply to negative 15, sorry, but add to two, I should have said. So two numbers that multiply to negative 15, but add to two is positive five cos x and negative three cos x. And then we can do what we normally do for a decomposition question, we, what we group these things, and we take out a greatest common factor. So we take out a cos x here, and we get a three cos x minus five, and we take out a negative one here, and we get a three cos x minus five. So when we solve these equations, we get uh, what do we get? We get uh, cos x minus one, when we take out this cos x and that negative one, and we get three cos x minus five, both equaling zero. So cos x equals one, well, we've seen that before in the first two examples. And on the second factor, we get cos x equaling positive five over three. And once again, since this number is greater than one, we know that this can't exist for cosine x because cosine only goes as high as positive one. So this is not one of our solutions. So our answer is zero degrees or zero radians plus two uh, pi n, where n is any integer. So in summary, 
Trig identities will help you turn a trig equation with more than one trig function into an equation with only one trig function, thus making it easier to solve. You just have to make sure that you make the right substitution. So you always want to make the equation easier, get to only a single trig function as opposed to more than one. So you need to know how to solve basic linear and quadratic equations in order to solve trig equations. And having your unit circle handy will be quite helpful. So your assignments is on page 320 to 321. Good luck and see you in class.